I mean, I've got a bit of a secret. I've actually never taken a Deus Chops and Abrams course in my life. They like grind lead code. I still think they're quite stupid. And <laughs> actually, a lot of people disagree with me, which is fine. Hey everyone, Dev again. I recently had a great conversation with Igor, a data scientist based in London. We talk about his journey from physics to data science, whether or not lead code is relevant for data science, and hype around LLMs. I've stitched together the most relevant parts of our conversation into this video, and I hope you guys find it interesting. By the way, he also has a YouTube channel where he drops invaluable advice on breaking into data science, so be sure to check it out and subscribe to his channel. Pretty curious about your journey from <laughs> studying physics to now working as a full-time data scientist and balancing content creation at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I've talked about it in previous videos as well, kind of my journey. Uh, the general lowdown is I initially wanted to do PhD. Um, I thought she did Big Bang Theory when I was like 13. And then yeah. I did a year of research. So I did like a, like a it's called a mini PhD where your master's thesis is like this year of research you did. I did it at this place called the National Physical Laboratory in uh, in London, in Teddington. And essentially, I did it was a year of research, and I just didn't find it that enjoyable. Um, it's just very slow. So uh, I thought physics research would be what it was like 100 years ago. You know, like right. mechanics or the Einstein, where it's over to, when all the things were exciting. It's just not that exciting anymore, at least in my opinion. And then yeah. at that time... Uh, the documentary AlphaGo came out and basically after watching that I was like, oh, this is really cool. So I just started learning about ML, AI, stuff like that. Uh, started teaching myself my final year at university. So this is like December 2020-ish. Um, and then I started just teaching myself. Uh, I kind of knew how to code anyway, a little bit, and like Fortran. So if you go use Fortran, uh, like old school, old school Fortran is. Um and then, yeah, teach myself, then became a uh, data scientist, got some offers, some grad scheme offers, took one in around August, July, I think. I always get the dates mixed up, but like in the summer, and then started full time as a graduate data scientist in September 2021. So pretty smooth transition, really. I didn't have like a time where I was looking for a job, so I'm quite fortunate with that. But obviously, I think three years ago, it was a bit easier than it is now. Yeah, I think for anyone in the audience who's studied something like math or physics or any kind of engineering, it's definitely a much, much smoother transition to data science or kind of any subfield within tech. I think it's quite, we were speaking about this before, before the call in life, is that I think a lot of those, you can get to data science in different ways. And I've seen those people go from uh, non-target backgrounds, you could say, to becoming a really good data scientist. I've seen people go straight to data science. It's just no route is the best way. It's just doing the way you think is best for you and also easiest. I always, I always advocate for going yeah. the route that's kind of, may take longer, but it's easier. Like I've seen people go to the data analyst then to data scientist because yes, it may take longer, but it's more reliable. And at least you're exactly. working at the time, you're making money, you're still learning new things instead of, trying to fast track your creative data science, which is a lot harder to get into sometimes than a lot of analytical sure. roles, which is a requirement that sometimes are often higher. Uh, so that's what I always say to people. You can always go a different way and kind of use a different door than just a directly applied Definitely. data roles. 100%. I think that something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is someone wants to break into like a totally new career or a totally new job title. It's it's definitely a lot of work, and I've actually seen some people even burn out when trying to totally pivot careers or job titles. So there's definitely nothing wrong with kind of taking as long as you need and focusing on that that journey. Because if you could maybe achieve it in six months and like land that totally new job within six months, but you kind of burn out along the way, maybe mm -hmm. sacrifice other things that are important to you. But if you kind of take longer, maybe you take nine months to a year to kind of fully make the transition, fully pivot, but along the way you're able to kind of be more balanced, then in some cases that's the better option. I mean, you pivoted though, right? You went from medicine to like CS. What was that like? Was that hard or harder than just doing straight CS? I'm sure it was. I'm sure it's more, <laughs> it's like the mental yeah. change to go through in yourself. Yeah, so the good news is that back when I was studying to get into medical school, I was thankfully still taking an engineering major. I was studying kind of a lot of physics and math. So that made the transition from 
kind of aiming for medical school versus trying to get into tech a lot more practical. And because I had so much experience with math, picking up my first languages and starting to get into data structures and algorithms was a lot more practical. And mm -hmm. overall, I just, it's, I don't think I can recommend any kind of STEM degree enough that makes that pivot so much more doable, but it's obviously possible if you haven't studied STEM, there's countless examples of that. I mean, I've got a bit of a secret. I've actually never taken a data structures and algorithms course in my life. Uh, it's <laughs> quite shocking. I, I think I always think like I see people online complain about it, not complain about it, but say how a lot of the uh, lead code and assessments are based yeah. on the ESA. And I was like, yeah. I've never taken one, but I always I always look at it and I think I, I I'm pretty sure I do know most of these things through studying physics or basically doing data yeah. science. A lot of it is just. I don't know. Every, I probably won't be able to like answer questions in a certain way because I'm going on practice. But mm -hmm. I think you learn a lot of this through studying STEM subjects anyway. Like all these different exactly. like sorting, sorting algorithms I've, I've covered before in my maths um, in, at school doing maths. If anything, Same here. So a lot of it I already know before. I haven't done it in code, which is how they want you to get done, like the best way, the most efficient way of implementing it. But the core ideas you learn from most STEM degrees anyway. And I think coding yeah. is. I think coding is actually easier than actually understanding the thing because once you can code it, coding, exactly. you can implement it. It's just you may not be the best way of implementing it, but you can still do it. It's actually understanding how to do it is the hardest part. Definitely. For some of the hardest like data structure and algorithms questions, the implementation, the actual final answer is a very simple like 10 lines of code. Any anyone can write the syntax for that. But the hard part is the actual problem solving and being able to come up with the solution. So yeah, definitely. Even if you haven't taken a class in DSNA before, if you've studied like those algorithms through math, you would have like a super, it would be super easy to pick up. <laughs> I'm curious your take on this because I've been, ha I've had a few people in my comment section asking me, oh, do I need to learn? Do I need to like, grind lead code? Um, and I always say from my experience anyway in the UK, maybe it's different in America. And I, I never really applied uh, to like a big fan company uh, or got like very far through so maybe my experience is a bit limited but people say do i need to grind lead code i always say mm, probably not it's good to like learn python or like learn things i wouldn't spend my time necessarily trying to be really good at lead code to get data science yeah. job i'd rather like do data science because a lot yeah. of kind of interviews i've had are more here's a problem solve it but it's not like solve definitely tree, tree search or like it's like this is a case study do you attempt at it I don't know if you had a similar thing with, uh, with kind of the AI ML space. Yeah, I think at least in the US, lead code is not as big of a part of the data science and ML interviews as it is for software developer roles. But un unfortunately, it is still a component. So you yeah. can still kind of be hit with those data structure and algorithms problems in like a wide range of data science interviews. So I'll say that I think that the best approach for people who want to break into data science or, or ML roles is to kind of just do as little lead code as possible. I definitely wouldn't spend all my time on lead code mm -hmm. and absolutely grind lead code. I would definitely just dedicate as little time to it as possible just to be familiar with the basics because even though it's not fair and it's definitely a controversial subject, it still does come up in data science interviews. I went to a conference. Uh, this is like outside of, of, of like Gusto. Um, and basically what I found was that there's a lot of hype around LLMs. There are so many things that people were like doing startups based on LLMs. A lot of like project work was based on LLMs. And like, yeah. it got to a point where I was there thinking, it has to be a bubble. There's no way. Like, there's just no, it's, I'm a bit of a, I mean, I'm, I'm quite, of, not coy about it, but I'm, I'm a bit more of a, I don't believe in the hype of LLMs at all. And I'm actually not anti them, but I don't think that as useful people say they are personally and i'm not and if people always ask me oh do you think ai is gonna like take over data science as well i always say no not the moment and he's not in the moment right I, i'm i am willing to die, not die on the sword but i'm willing at the moment say no i'm again i might be completely wrong in the future i'm wondering what's like what's your take particularly in university what's like the the vibe like with uh with llms and like yeah you know, i also don't bubble? think that <laughs> as someone who's like worked on LLM research during my master's and one of the main things that I teach through like the YouTube channel and, and LinkedIn, I kind of focus a lot on LLMs. I'm super interested in LLMs. 
I think that most people should still study them and learn how they work. I, I don't think LLMs are replacing data scientists or software engineers any, anytime soon. I think that they will make data scientists and engineers more productive, though. So a take that's kind of been gaining in popularity is, okay, these tools aren't going to replace engineers or data scientists, but I think most people should use them to make them more productive, make themselves more productive when possible. So especially with the release of like IDEs like Cursor and mm -hmm. even even models like Sonnet from, from Anthropic, the, the Claude 3.5 model, these models are excelling at code generation. They're obviously not going to take away like the problem solving and critical thinking that data scientists and engineers have to do every day. And that's why I don't yeah. think that they're going to actually replace them anytime soon. But I do I think, think that they can save stupid. a lot of time and in terms well, of like the competitive, monotonous I don't parts know why I'm so anti of programming, like, honestly. I, like, I, I think those parts there's, there's can something be off kind that, of delegated uh, away I mean, to LLMs just to save time, take on honestly. They're not replacing the video, I have those I have roles anytime soon, video. but I think they can increase productivity. I've used LLMs to help. I mean, I'm quite of a... It slows me down. I have like a range of much more than you make. Not dim view on them because... And I'm just like, oh, it's a... And to the point where I, f I felt now I don't use them as much as I used to because I felt my coding abilities were slipping slightly in that I relied on them too. It's like, do I, it's like, you're right, it's like productivity. You rely on them so you kind of lose some sort of that ability to code or know syntax really well, like pandas. I kind of lost the ability to do basic pandas syntax or like I wasn't as fluent as before because it allowed it for me. Good yeah. or bad, it's like I don't write an assembly code anymore. Because I have Python, so it's like this is just a natural extension. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it's like I'm at that point there. And my other thing is always with data science is, uh, yeah, fine, maybe we'll make code, but at the end of the day, LLMs can't do critical thinking the same way. You can give yeah. it a problem, but it doesn't have like it's very narrow in, its, in the way it approaches it. It doesn't. You have to tell it how to approach it. Whereas as a human, you can think of so many yeah. different ways, and you can use it as a, as a like a as a thinking tool. But even then, I don't like to use it as a thinking tool because it kind of reduces my critical thinking a little bit because I'm relying on it to give me the answer. Whereas I think I can obviously get a better answer because I have just better intuition than the LLM, which is just trained on data. It's not actually yeah. thinking, right? It's just trying exactly. to get information and those most relevant to the Spot your question. On. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree, man. Totally agree. So... Could be a doomer. I, I think if you're da if you're watching this and you'll be a data scientist, your job would be gone in ten years, as it stands, right? Unless someone does break AGI in the next ten years, which could be possible, but um, I find it very unlikely. 